Our next speaker will be Karen Kesha. Karen is the executive director of the Yale Center for Research Computing and the senior director of research technologies at Yale. Karen joined the staff of Yale in 2013 as ITS director of research services and in 2014, she was appointed senior director of research technology. Before coming to Yale, Karen served as chief technology officer and vice president of technology at Betterment LLC in New York City. Prior to this, Karen was the manager of the development group at the Columbia University Center for Bioinformatics. Karen holds an undergraduate degree from Queen's University in Canada and an executive master of science degree in technology management from Columbia University. And he is our truly our host today. So welcome, Karen. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thanks, Steve. Now I'm just thinking, how am I going to implement these things? <laughs> hey, think of what an opportunity this is to how we are going to show how open science should be done. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> so on that note, uh, today we are actually, we're going to see uh, a lot of great presentations. Um, on open data and research transparency and reproducibility across a broad set of disciplines from astrophysics to political science, from uh, American studies to outcomes research. But underpinning all of these, uh, these disciplines is really the need for a robust cyber infrastructure on campuses. And um, you know, as part of that uh, infrastructure, it's not just the technology itself, but it's also uh, access to skill sets uh, on how to use this infrastructure, uh, as well as the, uh, the training to keep up to speed with the latest and ever-changing uh, technology trends on campus. The mission for the Yale Center for Research Computing is to build this dynamic community to support these data and computationally intensive needs uh, in each of these disciplines. Today we welcome you to, of course, the fourth annual Day of Data, but also to the official opening of the uh, Yale Center for Research Computing. Um, planning for this center started uh, about two years ago, and today uh, we are officially open uh, for business. As Steve had shown, uh, if we look at the, the advancements in some of these scientific techniques, so for example, uh, the ability to map uh, the structure of the Zika virus with cryo-electron microscopy, or the ability to create these 3D models of ancient Egyptian artifacts from photographs, or if we look at the decreasing uh, trends uh, in costs in sequencing a genome, the ability to sequence a genome for $1,000 now versus the $100 million just 15 years ago, the complexities surrounding uh, the computational needs on campus are increasing as well. And advancing as well. And so it's not, soon not going to be uncommon where we're going to have to transfer data at 100 gigabits per second on campus or store multiple petabytes of data a day and then archive that data to be able to keep up with these federally funded mandates or federal mandates. Um, unfunded. unfunded mandates. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's going to get trickier and trickier and trickier uh, to keep up with these computational environments. And that, to me, is why a lot of these tier one institutions have or are starting to create these research computing centers and why there is a national dialogue at this point on how to support researchers on campus and what are the skill sets that are necessary to do so. In the last 12 months, the YCRC has been involved in a variety of initiatives 
um, from acquiring funding to refresh hardware infrastructure, the HPC computing clusters with the Yale Center for Genome Analysis, to providing dedicated support to groups like climatology or creating orbital simulators with astrophysics. But when thinking through, you know, an example of what demonstrates the broad suite of services that we offer here at the center, what came to mind is a faculty member who recently joined the Department of Psychology and how we handled that situation. So what we did there was we, prior to her coming to Yale from another institution, we paired her with um, the research support group led by Dr. Andy Sherman and Dr. Rob Bjornsson. And they sat with her and discussed what's it going to take to get your data here to Yale and what sort of computational environment are you going to need to process that data given that some of it is sensitive data. They provided the uh, data management um, infrastructure, uh, a storage infrastructure and archive solution uh, to house her sensitive data. They provided her with access to the computing cluster set up by the systems administration team at the computing center. They've equipped her lab uh, with access to the high-speed network on campus, which allows her to transfer her data from her lab to the compute resources uh, at a level much faster than the standard network on campus. They continue to plan with her what her next set of investments will be on infrastructure, and they will be providing training uh, as to how to use this infrastructure. Training where we host a lot of workshops here at the center. Uh, since July, this past July 1st, we've trained over 400 people on workshops such as scripting with Python, uh, R, um, uh, HPC boot camps, Amazon Web Services, and so we continue to uh, build out that suite of, uh, of workshops. So of course we're involved with everything computational uh, here at the, at the Research Computing Center, but we can also be seen as an entry point uh, for some of the other initiatives that Steve had alluded to here on campus, such as the Data and eScience Group, the Research Data Consultation Group, uh, both out of the library, ITS Research Technology Services in ITS. We're a nimble group and a small group, uh, but we do, uh, we are complemented uh, by a YCRC steering committee. Uh, many of you who are here today uh, who have influenced and provided um, insight on the direction of some of our initiatives. Uh, we're supported by our two faculty co-directors who are here, Harlan Krumholz and Daisuke Nagai, who consistently provide me with feedback on the pain points on campus and how we can turn those into opportunities. Um, and then, of course, we, we've, of course, had the support of the provost's office and the medic medical school through Steve Gervin and Carolyn Slayman, and we're, we're grateful for that. We've done a lot. Uh, we know there's plenty more to do. Our office hours are from 9 to 5 daily. Dedicated support hours with our research support groups are posted on the website, as are the training seminars. We thank you for coming to today's event. I do hope that I get a chance to speak with you throughout the day or in the coming months. And now, as is customary of the opening of any new center, we call Steve Gervin to do a ribbon cutting. <laughs> <laughs>